This is going to be about getting the dust collection line between the dust collector and the new dust shoe on the CNC machine. The first thing to do was to break my main dust collection line and add another branch. So I pulled that part of the main branch apart and I had to make another support which I had one of, but it was only a six inch support. So I had to cut an inch out of it to make it an eight inch support to work with the main, main branch of the dust collection. So I had to pull that apart and cut the new arc, and then put it back together again. Then mount the two supports at each end of the new branch. And make sure it's going the right direction. <laughs> Then I can start putting the, the main dust collection branch back together again. Now I need to build the actual branch line that will connect to that new connection. So I have these spring fit tubes and they, they basically come as a, a sort of curled sheet and they have a little detail that you, you pop together and it makes a tube. Now I'm not a sheet metal worker. I'm sort of making this up as I go, but it, it seemed to work pretty well. So the point of all of this is really to try and get a, a full six inch line all the way to the CNC machine as this will get enough airflow to to actually pick up most of the fine dust. Now I've got a metal blast gate that I thought about using but the flange is on the inside of the pipe and it, it just seems like it, it blocks a lot of the airflow as the opening is quite a bit smaller than the plastic blast gate where the flange is on the outside and keeps the, the pipe clear and to the full dimension of the pipe. Now I had to get this to approximately the right length. And again, I'm not a sheet metal worker, <laughs> so I'm trying to do the best I can at this. I can put that pipe together and that gets attached to a full length piece. Now, I use sheet metal screws to hold the joints together. This, this seems to work pretty well. Now, I had to make a few hangers for the pipes so that they could be hung from the ceiling. And I took a pipe strap and I sandwiched it around a chain with a bolt. And this gave me a loop to hang the pipe, then a chain to go up to the ceiling. Now I just have to remember to put the loop around the pipe before I put them together. I put a hook into the ceiling so that the chain's length can be adjustable, as I'm not exactly sure how long this needs to be at this point. I think here I've got one loop at the other end that you can't see out of the frame, which is what's holding the, the pipe up. Then one, once the pipe's together, I can then adjust the length of the chain, so it's actually doing the the work that it needs to be doing. I needed to make a solid connection at the next elbow. So I made a, a wooden support for the pipe and I had to cut it to the angle of the ceiling. And I wanted to cut the ring in half so that I could clamp it around the pipe with, with two screws. So once I had it marked and the angle from the ceiling, I could make that cut. Now with this, I, I had planned to clamp it around the pipe, but it ended up working just to, just to thread it onto the pipe. And that actually worked pretty well. So I can then attach that to the side of one of the fabric panels on the ceiling. Now one of the issues I was running into with this whole project was that I can't attach things wherever I want on the ceiling because of these fabric panels that I have up there. So I had to plan out and make some blocking to attach to those panels, which would give me some adjustability in the connection points that I had. So some of the shape of the pipe is based on what it needs to be, but some of it is based on where I could connect it to the ceiling. Now the next section of pipe is actually gonna be adjustable. It's gonna move with the CNC machine, like an arm. So it's gonna connect near the wooden support that I just made with a piece of flexible hose. On the other side of the flexible hose from the wooden support, 
I'm going to hang it on a chain, and this will help hold the pipe up, but still allow it to move. If there was no support there, the flexible hose would sag. So the strip of wood across the fabric panel and the hook that I put into that strip of wood is what's going to hold that chain up and hold up that end of this piece of the pipe. Then at the other end, I put in a temporary chain support just to hold it up while I worked on it. So its location isn't quite as important. So I could use one of the struts that runs within the fabric panel. Now getting the flexible hose onto the piece of pipe that I already had in place was one of my big concerns. And that ended up being one of the easier parts of this project. <laughs> that actually went, went pretty smoothly, which is what I'm doing now. Now I can start making the structure that's going to hold the other end of that pipe and it's going to allow it to move in an arc over the CNC machine. So it's basically a track for a wheel. And what I'm going to make is a curved I-beam out of wood. So I just cut the web out of a thin piece of plywood and now I'll cut the top and bottom curves on the CNC machine. And I can cut both the outline of the piece, but also the groove that the thin piece of plywood will fit into, and a track for the wheel. And I can take those out. And it looks like they came out pretty good. Now, I used a quarter-inch compression bit to cut these, so the, the top and bottom edge are really nice, but there's a little bit of fuzz on the actual cut. So I can sand that off really quickly. Then I can glue the top and bottom and the middle pieces together. So it's just some glue in the groove. I guess it's a curved dado that I'm using. And that'll make a curved beam. Then the next day I can take all the clamps off. And the wheel rolls in there. <laughs> Now there's going to be some structure to hold this to the ceiling. So I used some of the, the scrap pieces of plywood to make that structure. So I could cut it down to something that I could use and cut the strips that I needed. So I'm going to have three vertical supports that this will hang from the ceiling. And when I got the angle from the ceiling, I can use that now to transfer that angle onto those three vertical supports. So I temporarily attached the supports and I drew that angle onto them together. Then I could go back to the table saw and cut that angle into the supports and make them the right length. And I could pre-drill the holes where they needed to be. Then fully attach the supports and there'll be a piece that sits against the fabric panel that gets attached to the ceiling. And I put it up the first time and my angle was actually really close. What the angle does or needs to do is to make the beam level because I don't want the CNC machine to be pulling the end of the pipe uphill at any point. I put it up and I had it in place and then I remembered that I wanted to put some end caps on the beam so that the, the little wheeled cart that holds the pipe won't fall off the end. Now I can make the little piece that holds the wheel and the pipe. And this is what will move back and forth within the beam. I got that cut. Now to get the wheel, I had bought a pair of roller blades at a thrift store for this in mind, to use the wheels for things in the shop, I was thinking more for camera jigs and camera dollies, that kind of stuff. But they'll work perfectly for this. So I can pull the wheel off and I can use a, I think it's a 5 16 inch bolt fits in there perfectly. And I can then bolt it to the wooden piece that I've made. And it's nice because of the way the, the bearings work, you can clamp it with the bolt really tight and the wheel still turns you can see how it's going to fit within the beam. So I can put the piece up again. <laughs> and at this point, it's getting to pretty much the limit 
of the weight that I can hold with one hand and use the, the drill driver in the other hand and really hope that that first screw goes into something that will hold it in place. <laughs> but it worked. Now what I realized once it was up is that it had a lot of strength in a, in a straight downward pull, but it needed some side supports so it wouldn't rotate as it was getting pulled, pulled upon. So I cut out some pieces that'll go from the, the structure over the lights and attach to the ceiling. And those will each get a flange at each end, which is what I can use to put the screws into the, the different places that, that they need to attach to. So you can see how this will help with the rotating force on the beam. So because where I wanted to have the curve of the beam and where I could attach it on the ceiling, and also because the beam is curved, there was rotating force on the beam, which is what the supports help take up. Now I hadn't quite figured the height right on the rest of the pipe. So once the, the structure at the rotating end was in, I had to lower everything. So the parts that were on chains were easy. That was just a matter of, of lengthening that but I had to add a splice into my wooden support. So I lowered everything to about where I thought it should be, and I cut a piece to add to that wooden support at the length that I, that I needed. Now I can add the, the little support that goes between the pipe and the track. Now this is where a lot of adjustments started to happen. <laughs> I put it together and it kind of worked and you can see it working here. But I had always had in the back of my mind that the, the wheel in my little groove in the beam just wasn't safe enough. Like there was the possibility that that wheel could come out and the whole thing would fall. So I put as much of it together as I could. I shortened my four inch hoses. I think originally I had it in my mind that I was going to have the four inch hoses go up to the ceiling and dangle down to the, to the spindle. But someone mentioned that having the six inch hose come down and the four inch hoses being much shorter would be a lot better for the airflow. And, and thinking about that, I think that's true. There's almost the volume in the two four inch hoses, but there's a lot more surface area and it's really bumpy surface area with the flexible hoses. So I found a long enough piece of the six inch hose to bring that all the way down to the spindle. My first setup here, I had the four inch hoses even a little too long. So I ran it this way for a little while, but the four inch hoses ended up getting even shorter than this. Now it worked and I kind of ran it around. It's like, ooh, this, this works and it's good. And then I did it with the dust collection on. And I think it must, must have stiffened up the, the flexible hose a little bit or something. And the wheel came off. <laughs> Luckily, nothing was permanently damaged. <laughs> it's just a matter of putting it back together again. But it meant a rethink of the design. I had thought I would use a strip of either thin plywood or metal along the, the lower edge of the beam to, to sort of hold the wheel in place. But after thinking about it, what I thought a better solution would be, would be to have a set of wheels running horizontal on the bottom of the beam. And this would hold the vertical piece and the vertical wheel in place much more solidly. And there wouldn't be any scraping or rubbing of the wheel on anything. It would be held in exactly the spot that it needs to be held in. So the first thing I did is I actually finished the design of the piece that connects to the pipe. And re really the idea with that was to cut it in half and use screws to clamp the circle around the pipe, which would hold it to the pipe a lot more rigidly. It wasn't as easy as just slapping some horizontal wheels on there because I needed a, a track for those wheels to run on and I hadn't made the, the bottom part of the beam really to, to, to do that. This was sort of a design change sort of midway through the build. <laughs> So I had to make a track that would hang underneath the lower part of the beam so that the horizontal wheels would, would have something to run on. 
And from what I could tell and what ended up being true is that that track had to be a little lower than just connected to the lower part of the beam. So I, so I made some little spacers so that track will sit down from the lower part of the beam, which will let the wheel clear the structure and the support flanges and all that stuff that's up there. So then I can attach those tracks. And something else I could do by making the track separate, I could make them a little longer, which they needed to be because of the way I was thinking of doing the wheels. Because I didn't have a whole lot of room between the pipe and the track. And I made the track in two pieces, mostly because it saved on wood cutting it out on the CNC machine. Cutting out one long curve uses a lot of wood. <laughs> And I recut my little support that goes between the pipe and the vertical wheel. And I made a support for the horizontal wheels. My, my first piece that held the wheel and the pipe was a little too short. It didn't, it didn't go far enough. I needed more space between the, the pipe and the beam, basically. So you can see how those are going to go together. And I can clean them up. And I can cut my circle in half to make my clamp. And I can put this together. So I can put the wheels on the horizontal piece. What I ended up finding to put this together around the pipe near the ceiling, I could really only put two of the wheels on at any one time because it wouldn't fit around the, the, two, the pipe and the beam. But I pre-drilled the holes to connect the two pieces before I put it up in, up in place so that the, the screws would hold it and move it into the right location. And I wouldn't be fiddling with that up at the top of the ladder. So I attached the circle to the pipe. Then I could attach the horizontal piece to the first piece. And you can see how I have to kind of sneak it around without one of the wheels in place. Oh, and I cut the holes for the horizontal wheels, I cut as a little slot so that I had some adjustment in where the wheels are. So I could sort of have them hold tight to that track. So I can put the last wheel on and it works. And it actually works really well. I shortened up the four inch hoses from this view. They're shorter than what they are here. So this is maybe a little bit of overkill, but I don't have the ceiling height, I think, to really drop enough flexible hose to have a, a static connection in the middle. Also, at some point, I'm going to be building another four feet onto the CNC machine to make the vertical table at the end, which will mean I'll need to be able to move it 12 feet instead of 8 feet. Thanks for watching.